Hey there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are talking about craft roulette. I am sharing my process video for the card I made using the parameters from episode 209. Now craft roulette is a live improvisational card making game show right here on YouTube. It was last Friday night, episode 209, and there were some crazy parameters and I'm telling you they challenged me, but once I started I couldn't stop. And the reason why I'm so excited to talk to you about this is because I am going to be the special game show guest making cards with Mary Gunfun this coming Friday, April the 12th at 530 Mountain Daylight Time. So make sure you turn into their YouTube channel. I'll have a link for you in the description box below. So we're starting out today's video with my creative companion for the Craft Roulette show. I have written down the parameters there on the page. The project was a trifold card. The colors were inspired by a sleigh ride. The element was a joke or something funny, and then the random element was something out of proportion. So I uh, looked through my stash. I had some things in mind I wanted to use. And so I'm just like making notes, brainstorming my card, sketching it out, writing down what I'm gonna use, and then we'll see how it all comes together. A lot of these things made it into my card, which sometimes they do not. But um, I also added a lot more. Like I said, this is the card I could not stop. Like even doing this voiceover right now, there's something else I want to add to the card. I'm going to ask you what you think if I should add it at the end of the video and you can leave a comment and let me know if I should add it or leave it off. Okay. I need your help. All right. So here you can see on the left hand side, I can take notes. Now this is the set I wanted to use because I thought it was funny or like a little joke that says shake your merrymaker. <laughs> so I had yet to use this, which is embarrassing like this set is been out for a long time at trinity stamps and so yeah i was like i really need to use this stamp set right here so i am using that and then just taking notes on my thoughts and um my products that I'm using because a lot of times I like to tell you the names of the things that I'm using and I am forgetful. So having something like this is really nice. Now my out of proportion thing is going to be this sentiment set. Isn't it huge? It's too big for my card but I'm going to find a way to fit it in there and then I'll have my out of proportion element. So we're going to dive in to the card making and I will tell you about all the things and the parameters as I go. But to start out I needed to create a little scene for my merry making shaking Santa and so I'm making a night sky. I'm starting out with prize ribbon and I'm leaving an area that's lighter right there in the center. That's going to be for my my disco ball. Mm -hmm. I had to make sure I had enough room for that. And then I'm just going to layer up the prize ribbon. And then to make it really dark, I'm going to bring in black soot. And you can see here, I'm using my blending buddy brushes from Trinity Stamps. They're short. The brush itself is domed and it just, oh my word, applies so much ink so quickly. Effortless, effortless, mm hmm effortless, I can't say it y'all, you know what I'm trying to say, it's not coming out, but the ink did come out on the paper with these brushes very easily, and I made a really cool night sky. Now you just kind of have to go back and forth, maybe add a second layer until you get the color that you want, till you get it as dark as you want, and definitely go back and forth between the two to really soften out your blend. So then I'm all about splatter, and I like to do uh, usually a few different kinds of splatter. So I started with water. I love that on um, the oxide inks. I picked that excess up with a paper towel and then I'm bringing in mica distress spray stain, pulling the nozzle out. This is um, frozen fog and splattering that on there. I thought it was very disco ball inspired. <laughs> and then I wanted a little bit of like snow. So I'm using a scraggly like paintbrush there and I'm going to drag it along the edge of this window sheet and the um, medium I'm using is Dr. PH Martin's No Bleed White. Yeah, it makes great snow. I'm going to set that aside to dry and then work on my stamped images. So we've got our Santa, the disco ball, and the sentiment. Those are the three pieces in this stamp set. So I am going to go ahead and stamp them with some black ink. My favorite is Dare to Be Artsy's, uh, I think it's called Totally Black. Yeah. 
it's, I don't know why, it's just my favorite. So I stamped those onto some white cardstock and we're going to Copic color. I'm using R39 and R29 for all of my reds, which I'll show you how I did it here with the hat. I'm a simple Copic colorist. That's the way I like it. I want to, sometimes I want to really get into the coloring. I want to take a long time, do all the blendy blends, and then other times I'm like, I'm so excited to make this card, I can't sit here for hours and color every little thing. So I keep it more simple, and I, I like that I can do that with my alcohol markers. So I am using um, three different colors on the boots, and then um, they're all C markers, so cool gray. And then for the um, any parts of his suit, I also used cool grays, but then for his beard, I wanted that to kind of stand out and be separate from the white parts of his suit, so I'm using warm grays on the beard. For his um, skin, I used E00, but I'm really into like just doing a touch of E00 and then bringing in this apricot colored pencil, which by the way, these colored pencils are from Arteza. Somebody asked me that in a previous video. Um, I will, they don't have this exact set, I don't think anymore, I, but they might've just changed their packaging, but I can link that for you below. All right, next I am adding some cool grays to the disco ball. So I'm just doing C4, where I'm tracing over the exact stamped lines. Then I'll bring in C2 and I'm kind of going above and below or side by side on those lines, just kind of making it look a little bit more blurry. And then for the last effect on this, I'm bringing in C0 and I'm kind of tracing that inside square and just softening out the markers that I already used there. So it's gonna be mostly white, but this is the special part. I have this silver gel pen that I uh, was given and it's kind of sparkly. I thought it was perfect. So I'm just adding like a lowercase L shape on one side, that left side of the disco ball squares. And so it just has a tiny bit going across the bottom, you know, like a lowercase L kind of curves up. That's what I did. All right, then to accentuate my Santa, I added some white gel pen and that's gonna really help it look shiny, like that disco ball is shining on him. And I like that effect. So there's all the things and here they are cut out and ready to go on the card. Now, I think there is or could be a coordinating die set for this set, but I don't have it. If there is, you know where it's gonna be, in the description box below. You can just push um, more, and then you'll expand that box and see all the links that I have for you, like to Craft Roulette, to the supplies, to my Instagram and all those fun things, okay? All right, so next for the little snowy bank, I wanted it to be this really cool, um, light silvery glitter paper that I have, but I have this one scrap. So I just decided I'm gonna cut it and make two little hills and um, piece it together. So that's what I did. And then it's time to add our Santa, which I'm putting on this card front with an action wobbler. Yeah, so we can give him a little flick and he's gonna dance and it's just really cute. It adds to that fun or funny element of this card, right? Now I'm adding the disco ball, which is like the great disco ball in the sky. Yeah, I know it has this silver cord. I'm hanging it to what? <laughs> I don't know. It's just hanging in the sky because that's my vision. I mean, where do the northern lights come from if not the great disco ball in the sky, right? Yeah, it makes sense. So I popped up my sentiment too, and then it's time to put it on my... So, um, not slimline, this is a trifold card that is five and a fourth inches by 11. I scored it at four inches and eight inches. And then I have this flap that doesn't quite go to the middle. That's okay. I used paper that I have. I could have used a 12 by 12 piece, but I want to make it simple. So this card is easily a rep Here we go with the hard words, replicatable. <laughs> I did it this time. It was almost effortless. I don't know why I couldn't say it before, but there it is. Look at me in my words. Okay, so now it's time to work on the inside flap with my out of proportion element going into my trifold card, which by the way, there was a lot of controversy in the Craft Roulette episode about trifold card because trifold means three folds, right? Except a trifold card doesn't have three folds. It has two folds with three panels you know, like a trifold brochure. So in Craft Roulette, if you can explain what you're doing for a parameter, they count it. So 
we're I'm going with the traditional trifold like a brochure. That's what I'm doing, but it was open to your interpretation, which, you know, is so totally fun. Then you can, you know, stretch your imagination. They're all about being stretchy at <laughs> craft roulette. Okay, so I die cut out my sentiment with a strip die that gave it a little stitching across the top and bottom. Very cute. I love added details like that. I'm going to snip this um, apart because, you know, as I said, this is not going to fit in my card as it was stamped. So I cut that apart and then I'm going to make my own punty sent punny sentiment that's going to say, you're merry amazing. <laughs> So I'm cutting out the word Mary from the Simply Sentimental Mary die set. I backed my red, black glitter paper with some adhesive, and then I'm going to stick that down right between the two. Very cute. And I thought I was just going to leave it pretty much like this, but no, no. I wanted to put some more dancing critters that I thought would go with the scene, so I want to use the penguins. Now, I could have left the polar bear in there, but I really felt like I just wanted to do penguins. So I'm going to stamp this. I'm going to color it. You can see the colors I'm using here are the exact colors I used on Santa's boots, C8, C6, and C4. And then I'm going to use the same exact red colors on their hats. And I did bring in some YG17, yellow green? No, I think it was just Y17. Yeah, on the beaks. Kept those really simple and some R20 on their cheeks. I used the die to cut it out and then I'm just going to fussy cut around his wee little bum and make my penguins be their own image. I have a little scrap left of that glitter paper I'm going to use as like maybe like a little piece of ice they're standing and dancing on. Um, but I felt like the inside was just so stark white. Um, I wanted to just give a feel of that scene on the outside of the card onto the inside. So I just did a little bit of ink blending there. I'm going to splatter it just a tiny bit. I did water and then I'm going to do that same frozen fog just a little, um, keeping it like a more simplified version of the outside. So then I have a little place I can add my penguins and you get the feel of that night sky. So I'm adding not even Santa could bring a better friend as my inside sentiment. I also think that's, you know, funny and cute. So I stamped that. I laid the penguins penguins down where I'm going to put them. I need like a visual reference so I know where I want to stamp out these snowflakes, which I decided to do with the prize ribbon oxide ink because then it's going to sit on top of that ink blended ink nicely. All right, so time to glue in all the things. I thought this is where I was going to stop. I was going to be done, but I felt like, oh my gosh, I need more snowflakes on there. So I stamped some more. I mean, there's so many times I thought I was done with this card and an idea would come to me like this one, like, oh yeah, I wanted to add a little scallop there. So this particular die is like the slimline curtain call die. It's for, um, to make a curtain for this, uh, amazing stamp and die set combo that Trinity had, but I love that tiny scallop for card making. You've probably seen me use it. I love it so much. Now I put this onto a card base that was five and a half by four and a fourth inches. So I have a nice border all the way around. I thought some embellishment would be nice. These are some really old Trinity stamps. Um, embellishments. They were in um, the Halloween kit for the Halloween card class I did for Trinity. And so I just have some left over, but they look like little shine marks. I thought they went great with the disco ball. I put them around there and then on the disco ball too. And there's my card, but just kidding. I'm not done. I felt like I needed something more on this. Your Mary amazing. It was looking a little 4th of July ish to me. And so I added a penguin. I am from another, this is called Ice Friends, this stamp set. And then, oh, he's going to need a little snowflakes too. So let me just stamp that. But guess what I did? I put the stamp on the block so that it was, the snowflake was stuck to the block and I inked the back of it. It's like I've never stamped before. All right, good thing there's a die for this. So I stamped it on another piece of paper till I got one I really liked. Then I die cut it out, stuck it on there. Now the blue stamped part is a little bigger, but it just has a drop shadow. It's fine. It's great. It adds character. I like it. <laughs> then I had some printed pattern paper. So like I bought this pattern paper off of Etsy. I printed out um, because I like red and white striped paper on my Christmas cards a lot. So now I have an endless supply of it. Like anytime I feel the whim, huh, I just print some out. And so that's where that's from. And then I decided let's 
add some more things. So I have this Snowflake Trio die set. This die set does have shadow layers, but I'm just using two of the snowflakes from the three. And I'm gonna put them over this paper on that side. Like it seemed random to have this giant space of striped paper. So let's add some black snowflakes. And I don't know why, but I felt like I didn't wanna do glitter. Like maybe it would just be too busy over the top of the striped paper. So there you've got something cool and textural when you open this card, but this is like making like five cards in one because you got the front, you've got three panels on the inside plus the other side of that flap. Yeah, and I just went for it. So now I'm stamping Happy Holidays, which is also from the um, Polar Party, that one with the polar bear and the penguins. And I like this because I can stamp it and then color in the letters and I don't have to stamp Happy Holidays in red ink because stained red clear stamps make me a tiny bit sad. I don't like it. And I really hate it when the stamps turn yellow. Those two things, they make me sad. Like I'd rather them be stained with black. I'm okay with that, but the other two makes me sad. All right, how about let's add some more snowflakes. Oh, and you can see the penguin I used here um, is from another stamp set called Frosty Friends Forever. It's all penguins. There's like a penguin cafe that's an igloo. It's super cute. Oh my gosh. And um, in one of those sets, the one with the polar bear, the ice friends, no, polar party, sorry, I use so many things. The little the little penguin stuck in the snow, I had to do it, it's so cute. So I put that on the back of the card. So those are all the things, but this is what I need to know. Should I add a penguin or two to the front of the card next to Santa? I need to know. Okay, one other thing I wanted to point out about the Crafty Companion is that you can get these Avery labels that fit the color squares perfectly. And so I use my Copic markers and I even brushed some of the prized ribbon ink on one of the stickers and stuck them down. And then you know what colors you used. You can come back to them. I really love it. This is very similar to the um, card makers sketchbook from Trinity Stamps. And so if you play Craft Roulette, you're gonna love this book. And if you do not play Craft Roulette, you've gotta come watch on Friday night when I'm gonna be on, the, they're gonna spin a wheel that randomly selects the parameters. And then me and Mary, we're going to both create a card within those parameters. And the people watching create cards and they submit them and they're up for prizes. They have a lot of sponsors, they give away stuff. Your card will get shown on the next episode. It's a great community of fun. So I hope that you will check it out on Friday night. 5 30 um, mountain daylight time right on youtube i'll have a link that you can go and click a little reminder and come watch i would love to have you there i'll see you all very soon on the next video happy stamping bye